yeah, it wouldn't quite be the same if it was Michael McIntyre <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's exactly. old Peter Kay talking about roller cola or something like that. You need the edge. When dealing with such serious themes alongside comedy, how did you strike a balance within the film? When I conceived of the story, it was initially an idea about a teenage girl who discovers a talent for stand-up comedy and has that threatened by her familial circumstances. And the more I worked and developed what those circumstances were, the more I realised I was telling the story of a young carer. So it's ultimately, Jellyfish is a drama. Like, even though it is about someone who discovers comedy, it's still very much a drama. It's just there is comedy inherent in the drama. So it was a very fine balancing act. I always tried to push the comedy as far as I could without it going, you know, it, without tipping the scale. So it was, yeah, just a balancing yeah. act, really. It, it, yeah. I mean, it definitely shows that you have a great balance within mm. the film. So it's a film about young people. What ways have you had teenagers connecting with the film so far? It's been incredible, really, really positive, and I'm really pleased that um, people of the age of Sarah are able to see uh, something of themselves on screen in, in, in an authentic way. I mean, I don't know how old you are, maybe a little bit older than Sarah, but if you didn't feel like you were seeing yourself on screen or something of yourself, or you, you were seeing something inauthentic or that didn't ring true, then you would have a problem with that, you know? and that would be a problem for me. So thankfully it isn't a problem because people have responded really well, so. Yeah, yeah. that's great to hear. I love seeing stories that show how creativity can help us deal with harder times. Mm. Has that ever been the case for you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when I was a teenager, my version of comedy was skateboarding. And um, I come from quite a small city, a rural city, and that was my form of creative outlet and, and expression. And that was actually how I've discovered filmmaking because watching skate videos and then being inspired to make my own with my friends led me to learn how to use video camera and editing equipment and then what sound, how what sound meant for, and you know how you could put music on things and stuff. So yeah, so that that, that was it for me. That was my that it, was how I started. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely really. F interesting how things sort of snowball one after the other. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The actress Liv Hill, who plays the protagonist, Sarah, mm -hmm. is incredible in her portrayal of such a complex character. How do you work with her to help her produce such a believable performance? The easy answer to that is that Liv's just an unbelievable talent and she has an, a gift and, and an ability that is very hard to learn and she just has it. So when it came to working with her on set, it, it was one of the easiest things I had to do in terms of being the director and um, the filmmaker. And uh, we, we had conversations, we talked a lot. I'm not very prescriptive um, to, to begin with. Like if I have a very clear idea of what it is that I want, um, what my vision for each, you know, beat, scene, you know, act, of what the film is and I think ultimately it comes down if you know that before you cast then you can you cast well then everything is kind of like everything's very smooth and if if you don't cast well then and I don't mean casting bad actors I just mean casting someone who isn't quite necessarily right for the vision that you have as the director then you can then things could be problematic but I, I just got very very lucky with my cast she's definitely a really captivating actress she's phenomenal she's incredible yeah she is Sarah's teacher recommends she watches other comedians to hone her own stand-up. Mm. How did you pick the right comedy to show, like Frankie Boyle, who some may consider to be a sort of controversial? Yeah, he is controversial. He, he definitely uh, splits opinion. But my idea and philosophy of what comedy is, uh, is very much in line with, it, with his, I believe. I'll tell you something, it's quite interesting actually, because this only, I only realised this the other day, because it's been so long ago since we did the creative on the film, but Jellyfish was written uh, pre-Me Too. And when we wrote that scene, there was actually a comedian in that list who we ended up having to take out, because it just would have been so inappropriate for the teacher to have uh, recommended somebody who had, who had been kind of caught up in all that. So he, he was replaced and someone that I wanted in there in the first place actually went in. So, yeah, it just goes to show. Yeah, mm. it, his sort of extreme version of like comedy and making fun out of difficult situations really relates to her mm. situation as well. So if it was someone lighter, I could see how it might have not worked as well. Yeah, it wouldn't quite be the same if it was 
Michael McIntyre <laughs> or you know what I mean? Yeah, it's exactly. Or Peter Kay talking about roller cola or something like that. You need the edge. Mm -hmm. The lesson I get from the film is to treat people with more understanding and empathy. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest thing you'd like audiences to take away? The film is the film. And the film can't really do anything on its own. It's the actions of the audience after they've watched it, reflected on it. If they, if they can act differently, if there's something that someone can change about the way they behave to a vulnerable young person or the way they see a vulnerable young person, the way they think they can help them better, support them better, then that, that would be a huge, hugely positive step forward in society in my opinion because um, there are far too many vulnerable young people living the life that Sarah Taylor leads in one one way or another uh, and there's there, there are multiple Sarah Taylors in every village town city up and down the country so what I really do hope is that those people are better supported hopefully as a result of, of people watching the film and gaining a better understanding of, of what, what it is to live a life like Sarah's. Yeah, it's so important to sort of represent people who aren't just your normal mainstream people. Mm -hmm. The drama teacher demands that the students look more critically at their own performances and he says, must come from within you. Mm -hmm. Why does that advice resonate with you? Because that's where all the good art comes from, I think. There's only one of you, there's only one of me, there's only one Sarah Taylor. And I think we all have our individual stories to tell. Um, and I think that's really important.